Many Americans are wondering how they're going to pay their bills. Is the economy going to get better or worse? Plus, a new CNN poll shows that people believe Trump is the better option when it comes to the economy. To help me understand this, I have one of Trump's top economic advisors, Steve Moore. Steve, thank you so much for joining me today. Steve, thanks so much for having me. It's a real pleasure. So um, wanted to get your take on this. The White House continues to brag that this is one of the strongest uh, economies in American history, yet a vast majority of Americans believe Donald Trump will handle the economy better than Biden, according to a CNN poll. Something's not making sense to me. So is President Biden and his White House PR team really saying that the American economy is strong for the wealthy, but not for the middle and lower income families that are struggling? I don't think it's too good for anybody, really. I mean, if you look at virtually all of the economic statistics on what happened in Trump's presidency, uh, you know, up until COVID and when that, that year, basically the government was shut down and the economy was shut down. So not much happened. But if you compare, you know, what we did in those first three years when Trump was president versus Biden's term, I mean, there actually is no comparison. I think I looked at 16 of the top 20, you know, types of um, comparison data you'd look at gas prices, interest rates, poverty rates. If you look at uh, obviously inflation, food prices, if you look at things like um, what it costs to buy a new home, uh, home ownership rates, if you look at, um, you know, our national debt and the deficits that we've run up, um, as I said, about roughly 16 out of the 20 Trump you know, outperforms uh, Biden, and in many cases, very significantly. Now, right now, I would describe the economy as mediocre. You know, it's thank goodness we're not in a recession. But yeah. don't forget, we've added five to six trillion dollars in debt in just the first three years that Biden has been in office. And those are bills that have to be paid. It would be like if you and I went out and, you know, had, you know, lobster and caviar and drank and drank and, you know, dancing on the tables, you know, yeah, you'd feel good about things. And then, you know, the next morning you can't get out of bed. And that's what we've been doing. We've been living on borrowed time and borrowed money. And I think every American, whether you're for Trump or Biden or RFK Jr. or whomever, uh, you have to admit that um, this has not been a good economy and that this uh, even these, you know, moderately good times on the economy are going to crash and burn because you can't just go on borrowing forever. Yeah, well, I think Amer uh, many Americans can relate to that. Uh, and the proof is in how much credit card debt is being run up. They yeah. literally are living on borrowed money and borrowed time. So I, I think they can definitely relate uh, to what you just shared with us. Now, I don't love to uh, give CNN much positive credit, but President Biden was recently interviewed and said one reason his presidency has been so difficult is that he inherited 9% inflation. Yet when I go back and do my own research, uh, when I look at the fact checkers, even on CNN's own fact checkers, they're saying that he lied 15 times in 17 minutes. And the biggest lie was that the economy was actually at a 1.4% inflation rate. So uh, we learned recently from an ESPN uh, host that all of Biden's interviews are scripted down to the words and, and questions. So uh, was this him just repeating what was in his script or does he actually believe that he inherited a 9% inflation economy? I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that, you know, when we were, uh, when Trump was in office, uh, you know, and I was one of his economic advisors among many, you know, we brought the inflation rate, the average inflation rate was, you know, between two and 3% under Biden. It's been, you know, between five and 7% per year under Biden and prices are 20% higher today. And those are just overall across the board. If you look at what I call the common man inflation rate of the things you have to buy, you know, I think the real inflation rate is up about 25 or 30 percent for things like grocery, gasoline, paying your mortgage. All of those have totally escalated. So the bottom line is, let me make this really simple. The average household gained about six thousand dollars in real income under Trump. And that's a lot. And that even includes the covid year when the economy was shut down. 
Under Biden, for his first three years in office, the average family has lost about $2,000 in purchasing power. So that's an $8,000 swing for an average family. In other words, they gained 6,000 under Trump after inflation. They lost $2,000 under Biden. That's the reason Trump is likely to win, because most American families are poorer today than they were when Biden came in. Okay. Help me understand this. You, you've got a brilliant economic mind, and and uh, Biden is saying, I'm not going to raise taxes on anyone. And then out of the other side of his mouth, he's saying, we are definitely letting the Trump tax cuts that benefited most lower income, middle class families. We're going to let those expire. And then all these economists are showing how much more money is going to be handed over to the government. So it is is Biden lying? Is this just semantics? Like, oh no, it's 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 past Trump that's going to make your tax bill, not future Biden. Help me understand what he's maybe trying to spin or or say. Well, uh, you know, when Trump was in office, you know, one of my proud achievements in working with Trump was and for him was that we. Put, you know, we're kind of architects of his tax plan. We cut the business tax rates to make American businesses more competitive because we want to put America first. We cut small business taxes because small businesses are the backbone of the American economy. And we cut taxes for family. And the average family gained, you know, we, depending on everyone's individual circumstances, but on average uh, about $1,500 to $3,000 in lower federal taxes. That's a big deal. Now, Biden says, oh, well, I haven't raised taxes on anybody making less than 400,000. That, that's a lie. We, we just talked about this. Inflation is a tax. That's all it is. It's Think of it as a 20% sales tax that you pay every time you go and buy something at the store that's more expensive, whether it's ground beef or eggs or Cheerios or you know ice cream cone. Everything is about 20% more expensive. And that is a tax. Now, uh, taking that into account and also the fact that he wants to repeal the entire Trump tax cut, that would hit not just millionaires and billionaires, but would have affect every one of us. But the more important point is Biden wants to double the capital gains tax. He wants to tax unrealized capital gains. He wants to raise taxes on American businesses. Look, how is that going to create jobs? Is there anybody in the, in the country who actually thinks raising taxes on American employers is going to get them to hire more workers? I mean, that's an absurdity. It's it's a, a non sequitur. And so uh, obviously you can't create a, uh, a healthy economy by taxing the people who create the jobs and the wealth in the first place. Yeah. You know, the, I think it was Ronald Reagan who said something to the effect that the best stimulus check is a job, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it, it's a job. And so if if people are being uh, overly taxed, uh, there's too much red tape. It does not create jobs. Um, Biden has talked about being the greatest job, job creator in American history, yet wasn't most of his job creation, in fact, just people under Trump getting their job back after COVID lockdowns yeah. uh, and also... Uh, many of them have been just part-time and seasonal jobs versus full-time, good, gainful employment. That is true on both counts. Now, look, we to give Biden credit, there is, it is a healthy jobs market right now, and there are more jobs out there than people looking for work, and that's a good thing, you know. And so, anybody who's looking for a job, you know, if you want one, they're out there. Um, that's uh, one of the positive things. But when it comes to creating really good new jobs. You're right. About 60 percent of the jobs that Biden is taking credit for, just jobs that shut down during COVID, Trump jobs that have been created by Trump and then you had to be shut down. I mean, I was out of my job for a few months. I mean, you probably were yours as well. And then it came back. Well, that Biden didn't create that job. It was just, you know, it's like saying, you know, if you didn't work on Sunday and you worked on Monday, oh, I created a job because I was <laughs> taking a vacation day. Um, the other, you make a really good point too about part-time jobs. More and more Americans are working part-time. Now, some of that is by choice. You know, America, many Americans don't want to necessarily work a full-time job, but there are a lot of, a lot millions more who want a full-time job, but can't get a full-time job. And they're, you know, try, try raising your family working 20 hours a week. Doesn't work. Yeah, no, yeah, you, you absolutely can't. Um, another thing that's not working is I, I believe in the future, Gavin Newsom is going to run for president. Probably won't be this cycle, it's too late. Um, but I, I was reading over the weekend that 
California spent billions and billions of dollars on a high speed train and they've literally got 1600 feet of track, right? Then like, like an hour later, I read that they've pumped almost $25 billion into this homeless problem. And the only outcome is there's more homeless people. Then yesterday on, on uh, when, when I had some downtime, I read they, that they asked uh, Gavin Newsom, how come under your leadership, there's now a $100 billion deficit in California? And he said, climate change. It's nothing that I could do, right? So anyway, uh, just, just curious what your thoughts are on all of this mismanagement of money in California. Well, it's a good, it's an important point because even for people who don't live in California who are watching and listening to this show, um, you, you have to pay attention to what's happening in California, A, because it's our biggest state, you know, what happens in California affects all of us, but also because if you look at the Biden plan, you know, what, what, the, what the left wants to do is, is basically make all of America look like California. Right. That's their grand plan. They think that, you know, by the way, I love California. It's the most beautiful place on earth. You know, beautiful women, beautiful beaches, beautiful sunshine, you know, beautiful blue skies. I mean, it's an incredible place. One of my favorite places on earth. It's just being it's being depopulated and ruined by liberal politicians like Gavin Newsom uh, and Nancy Pelosi. And so, you know, when I was there just a week and a half ago, I mean, I remember getting out of my uh, hotel bed and looking out in the morning and seeing the beautiful blue sky and the sunshine. Then I see a gasoline station with the service station saying gas, $6 and 49 cents a gallon. I'm like, wow. I mean, how do you ruin a place like California? Well, you do it through liberal progressive policies. And for the first time in history, more people are leaving California than are going to California because people can't afford the cost of living. They can't afford the taxes, the green policy. They, you know, in California, pay attention, folks. I mean, they've got green outs and blackouts and, and brownouts because they don't have an electric power because they are trying to go green with their energy and it doesn't work. So this is a flashing danger sign for the rest of the country. California is coming apart and they want all these policies to go national. Yeah. It's like, is it really climate change or is it you trying to go green too quickly that is, you know, bankrupting your state? Um, final question that I want to hear about your new book, uh, GovZilla. Um, can can you not? This is maybe a dumb question, but you know, we're some estimates say that we're close to 10 million illegals that have come into the country since Joe Biden took office. Right now, we're adding about 200,000 to 250,000 a month, so around three to four million a year. Is this sustainable? Because I I'm just reading hospital systems are bank, going bankrupt because of. Uh, the, the pressure on them, school systems are struggling because of the pressure, welfare systems. It, it just, it has me nervous that by trying to be kind, we're actually going to end up hurting all, you know, what's a better way to say this? We're going to weaken the strong in an attempt to strengthen the weak. And it, it, like all of the people that have paid into this tax system for decades, their entire career, now that money may be evaporating because of the newcomer that they, you know, they want to call them newcomers versus illegal aliens. What What are your thoughts on this? It does not seem sustainable to me. Well, so, so thank you for mentioning the book. Uh, it's called GovZilla, How the Relentless Growth of Government is Devouring Our Economy and Our Freedoms. And I think everybody, I, it came out about nine months ago. I think people are starting to see that firsthand. People are saying I'm clairvoyant because I put out that book just as Biden really started to ruin the economy. But, you, you know, the underlying uh, I want people to get it because you, you can you know, just look at the pictures. There are a lot of graphs and charts in there showing what's happened to our economy with our debt, with the massive growth of spending, the number of regulators, the number of rules. Um, it's just government is really devouring our economy. And, and that's not the American way. We want government to we want a government, but we want it to be very lean and efficient. Uh, and, uh, you know, as the old saying goes, um, you know, we want uh, government governs least governs best. And so we've gotten away from that ide ideal. And now with respect to the immigration issue, um, you're not going to talk to anybody probably uh, in America who's more pro-immigration than I am. I think immigrants are incredibly important for our economy. They make unbelievable contributions. They're one of the reasons that the richest country in the world. Um, and so, you know, we want and we need immigrants now more than ever. However, 
what Biden has done is completely contaminated the immigration system. You know, you got to come in. Uh, when I say I'm for legal immigration, I mean legal immigration. People are coming in lawfully who want to contribute, make America a better place, work hard, share in our freedoms. You know, that's that's what America's all about. But not we can't have criminals coming over board. You know, people want to go on welfare, people who. And by the way, I think these frankly, I think these uh, these. Um, you know, migrants are the victims of a of an un, of a very unfair policy that Biden has come into place. You know, oh, just come in, and then there's nowhere for them to go. You know, I have two liberal sisters uh, who live in the Chicago area, and and they're like, "Where did all these migrants come from?" And I said, "Well, you're the one who wanted Chicago to be a sanctuary city. Here they are. How do you like it?" So people are really feeling the strain of it, and I want to I want to get back to a system where it's orderly. It's peaceful. You're not letting criminals or people with diseases or people who might be drug runners. Look at the fentanyl that's coming across the border. We got to re-seize control. And I guarantee you when Trump wins, the first priority other than getting our energy situation, you know, pumping more for energy, but also getting that border secure. And then once that happens, I think we should have, you know, we would probably need more legal immigrants, but not this way. And it's really hurt the people that it's supposed to help, but it's also hurting inner city residents who are just seeing their cities taken over. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with everything you just said. I, I love that we're a, a, a nation of immigrants, but it's got to be done legally. Bring in the brilliant minds, the hard workers, get rid of the gangs and the violence and the drug runners, all of that. 